today is the day. We're gonna start this, we're gonna vlog it. We're hopefully going to enjoy it. If not, I'm so sorry in advance. Cause I was like, ooh, he a good man. But now I'm like, mm, he a bad man. But also, if bad man, why sexy? That's my question. Just give me more of that. I just eat that shit up, man. I eat that It's your girl Jay and today I have decided that I am finally going to bite the bullet and begin Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo since the TV show is coming out in like six days or something like that and I still have yet to even read the Grisha series. I feel like now is the time so that I can watch the TV show and be on the bandwagon with everybody else because I don't want to be left out like I always am. So the plan is to start this. I literally just have the bookmark on the very first page. I've literally had this on my shelf since it came out or like a year after it came out, like 2015 or something like that. Honestly, I don't even know when this came out, but this came out in 2012, but it's been on my shelf since like I started book two, which was I think think 2012 2013 something like that i've been avoiding like learning about this series i don't even know the synopsis like literally all i know about it is that there's a girl named alina a guy named mao who before 30 seconds ago when i read like the first sentence of the synopsis um i thought it was a girl apparently mao is a boy so we're learning new things already in this vlog and that there's somebody named the darkling who like literally everybody is in love with but that's pretty much like all I know. Like I'm assuming the Grisha have magical powers, but again, I do not know. I literally know nothing. So I figured like now is the time to join the hype train. A lot of people say that this isn't the best Lee Bardugo book. I've only read one other Lee Bardugo book, which is The Ninth House, and I really like that book. So this is her first book, I believe. So like it's probably very different. Her writing style from 2012 to 2020 when the ninth house was released but or maybe it was 2019 honestly i don't know time is not my strong suit but we're gonna start this we're gonna hopefully enjoy it but yeah join me on this journey of hopefully success and falling in love with the darkling like everybody else if the darkling is the villain though then i probably will like them because i always end up falling for the villain i just like i'm a sucker for villains but we're gonna see we're gonna hope for the best and uh, I'll be back with an update when I have one. <laughs> but um, let's get this show on the road, why okay. don't we? We are done. Chapter one, first impressions. Alina, she's okay. I feel like I'm really gonna like her in the end, but right now she's coming off like super whiny and kind of annoying with her whole like, oh my God, I love Mal and he doesn't love me back kind of situation. Mal just seems like a fuck boy, but I feel like that's like, the whole point right now but everybody always says that they turn into a mal stan so i'm assuming that i'm gonna start liking him after eventually when we get farther into it um alexi seems pretty cool he seems like he's gonna be like a cool friend to have around maybe he's gonna like turn on them and like become evil i don't know he just has that vibe and i don't really know why i'm feeling that way and then is the fold supposed to be like a Bermuda Triangle thing like people go in and never come out type of situation or like what is going on I'm kind of confused with what it is but that's pretty much what I have to say for the first chapter I'm liking it so far like it seems like it's gonna be interesting I'm hoping like it becomes like really action-packed because right now it's the backstory obviously is only one chapter in but I'm hoping that it like amps up from like what people say I'm pretty sure it does so I'm liking it so far, which is a good sign. Okay, so I'm literally on chapter two and like two pages in. There's three different Grisha colors, blue, purple, and red. Does each color stand for like a different power? I'm very confused because right now it's talking about that there's dark blue kefta, which I'm assuming is like the robes. That's what they're called. But then it talks about how there's silver embroidery at the cuffs and the hems of the robes indicating that they were squallers. Grisha who could raise or lower the pressures of the air and fill the skiv's sails with wind that would carry us across the long miles of the fold. So does that mean that like there's the blue, red, and purple robes, but then different embroidery means different things? Like I am lost 
even though I just started this, this is the way my mind thinks and I just need to know more about the world because I get confused so easily. And this is why I avoid fantasy because my mind just starts spiraling and trying to figure things out way too soon. I literally annoy myself. Okay, I just read like three more lines down and now there's blue robes with red cuffs, which means that they can raise fire. So is there like the blue and then the silver and then red and then there's more different colors that indicate different powers that they have but then what are the red and the purples because like at the front of the book it says the Grisha and there's three different kinds and so I think Etheralki, Etheralki, those are the blue guys but I don't know who the Corporalki or the Materialki are yet. This is this is too much for my little brain to handle right now and we just started. <laughs> Okay, like literally 30 seconds after I say that Alexa is cool and I think he's gonna be like a cool friend to have around, the bitch gets taken by a Volcra, which is I think like pterodactyl creatures. I don't know, they fly and they screech and it just makes me think of a pterodactyl. But the bitch just died literally 30 seconds after I said I liked him. Of course, any character that I like always gets killed off, so mm, I'm just not gonna say my favorites anymore because they're always gonna die. But also Mal almost died or like he got attacked by a Volcra and like Elaine is like protecting him and he goes I'll meet you in the meadow because they used to play in the meadow when they were little kids and my heart Obviously he's not gonna die because I know that like everybody stands Mal so he's not gonna die but like oh, What a sweetie Okay, one thing I don't understand, which like, I don't know if it got explained and I just like didn't pick up on it, but why would you want to go into the fold in the first place? Like, I know that they're in the military, but like, was it a, you have to join the military at 18 or did they like choose to do that? Because like, why wouldn't you just choose like a different profession? Like if you know the fold is so scary and blah, 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 and like nobody returns from it, why would you go? There. I am confused. This is why like I don't understand like the military because unless it's like forced upon you I would never want to do it. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a chicken shit. <laughs> we have another different robe thing. This is like I need to write this down to like remember what these things are. I should annotate my books which I'm not gonna do because I don't have the patience for but red robes with black sleeves or cuffs or whatever means heart render and they're a corporal link? Cor corporal link? I don't know how to say that, but we have another one. I don't know what it means, but there's too many to keep track of already, and there's only three, so. A corporal, corporal link, whatever, however you say it. There's the heart renders who can kill people, and then the healers that heal people, so they're like opposites, I guess. So I don't know which one I would want to be. I think I would want to be able to kill people, but I feel like I would use that power to kill all my enemies, and that could be a dangerous thing. Not that I have a lot of enemies, but if somebody pissed me off, ooh, <laughs> dead. But then also being a healer would be cool because like, you'd be very loved in the community, I think, if you could heal. But also, I would want to kill people. Is this showing you my evil side i don't i don't know if i should edit that out so Alina is a sun summoner which is a grisha but it's not one of the options in the front of the book so what color is she is she red or blue or purple or is there gonna be like a new color is she gonna be like yellow for the sun i think i'm too focused on this color thing but like what color are her robes that's what i would like to know are they gonna like put up a new flag on the Grisha tent because like the three flags and the black one are there but now are there gonna be four? So I just finished chapter four and I am digging the Darkling. He just like saved Alina from an assassin and he is terrifying because he literally just like did that and cut a guy in half but Alina's like shaking and he's like oh you're shaking and she's like I'm not used to people trying to kill me and he's like really I hardly notice anymore the dude's funny but he's also like a little sweetheart because then he like uses his power to like calm her down and like oh, a gentleman but also terrifying because can literally cut you in half with the movement of a finger so like terrifying but I'm into it so my 
question about like what color robe she was gonna get just got answered so the darkling was like oh her kefta is gonna be black and she was like mm -hmm, actually i want blue first off when the darkling says you're getting a black kefta you take the damn black kefta secondly you have the option between red purple and blue and you chose blue why would you not choose the purple one like i get that the blue are the summoners blah 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 but purple my dude also I just feel like if you are a sun summoner, sun is yellow, so you should have a yellow robe. And then you can like sing the black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow song when you're like walking down the hallway with the darkling because you're like high esteem with the darkling. But no, you choose blue. Alina, Alina, Alina. Also, I think that she is like so feisty and I don't know if that's a good thing because like you literally just watched the Darkling cut a man in half with the swipe of his hand and then you're gonna talk back to him. If I saw anybody, not even the man, just anybody in general, literally move their hand and a man get cut in half, I would just do what they say. I would not talk back because I would like to keep my body in one piece. I, that might just be me, but I just feel like that is the smart road to take here but apparently we're just gonna continuously back talk and hope for the best so fingers crossed she keeps her body intact but i don't know if that's gonna happen it will because there's three more books in the series but girl Shh. okay i'm a little hesitant to say this since last time i said i liked the character they were killed off like three pages later but i am a big fan of genya or genya i'm not 100 percent sure how to say their name but she's like the servant that was assigned to alina by the queen but she's like such a little sweetheart like not a sweetheart but like she just seems like she would be like a really good person to have on your side like i feel like she would be like super loyal and like stick up for you no matter what but last time i said i liked a character they died so keep that on the down low because i don't want her to die because i actually like her so i just met bagra or whatever she's like the amplifier that's working with alina to like get her to be able to summon her own powers but the way that she's described literally all i can picture is like the witch from snow white like i'll insert a picture here but that's literally all i can picture and it's like the funniest thing anytime she talks i'm like oh i just <laughs> so we're doing like a training montage thing right now and Alina's fucking sucking at everything but we met Botkin who is supposed to be like the combat trainer and literally all I can think about is Dimitri from Vampire Academy this is literally just Dimitri like he's even got the accent and everything and I don't know which book came out first but one of them is ripping off the other one let me know which one it is because I'm not sure so Alina and the Darkling are talking about how they're gonna get her like an amplifier to make her like powers actually work and then he's talking about how like his men don't lie to him and she's like i felt a chill skitter up my spine knowing what the darkling could do i wouldn't be keen on lying to him either but yet knowing what the darkling can do you talk back to him every two seconds Wh where is the logic i don't understand okay so alina's like reading her theory about the amplifiers right now and it's saying that grishas can only have one amplifier for their entire life and it like claims them and they claim it blah 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 what if the darkling becomes alina's amplifier can that be a thing or does it have to be like an object because then they're like bonded together and it'll be like that trope where they're like together forever is that a possibility but he's also like a human amplifier and he amplifies like everybody's powers i'm pretty sure so is he allowed to be claimed by somebody I don't know. This is a total minor detail that literally means nothing, but it's talking about how winter just came and there's snow. And it says that the Inferni used their like fire power to like melt the snow on the pathways. And I would love that to be a thing because I absolutely hate shoveling. Like if you ask my parents, I refuse to do it unless they like make me do it. So if I just had like magical fire abilities, <laughs> life would be so much easier like i said minor detail that literally does not matter but thought i'd share anyway so alina and the darkling just kissed which is not surprising because like i know that alining or the dark lena whatever their ship name is is a thing but like i'm only halfway through the book and i thought that it was like a more towards the end thing because they've literally had like maybe six conversations with each other and they're just making out in the field still no sign of mal but i'm pretty sure that this is like a love triangle thing because people always talk about malina or Ma malina what i don't know how to pronounce the ship names but like i'm still confused with how this pairing is working because 
they literally have not talked to each other other than the darkling to be like how's your day still can't do shit don't worry you're okay you got this girl but, but that's that's how they've talked about it hasn't been like learning about each other or anything but you know when you're an all-powerful being people fall for you so, i guess mal and alina just had like the total notebook letter scene where she was like why didn't you write me and he was like i did write you and she's like i waited for you for seven years and just like i wrote you 365 letters i wrote you a letter a day for a year and then he's like it's not over it still isn't over you know that scene yeah they just had that moment except then they stormed off angrily so it wasn't exactly the letter scene but it was pretty much the letter scene okay Okay, so I was like partially right about Alina owning the Darkling. It's just gonna be like the other way around and the Darkling's gonna own Alina if he gives her the amplifier. I feel like I'm half right on these things. I also totally called in my head the Bagara chick was the Darkling's mom. Did not call that he was actually the Black Heretic or however you say it, but I can now see that that makes sense. And now I can't decide if I hate him or I like him. Cause I was like, ooh, he a good man. But now I'm like, mm, he a bad man. But also, if bad man, why sexy? That's my question. I am officially pledging my allegiance to Mal. I know that I said at the beginning I wasn't gonna like him because he just seemed like a fuckboy, but I am pledging myself to this man. He like just found Alina in the forest when all the Darkling's men are like hunting for her because she escaped because the Darkling is a bad man. And she was like laying down to go to bed and she like whispered like, hey Mal, thanks for finding me. And he was like, always. And I'm just like, oh, oh. They got in a fight, they had their notebook moment, and he still loves her. I swear, if they don't end up being endgame, I'm gonna be mad because of the Darkling and Alina. I just still don't understand their relationship. Like, I do now that he was, like, manipulating her and stuff. I think that Mal and her, like, childhood best friends to lovers? Yes, please. Just give me more of that. I just eat that shit up, man. I eat that shit up. Are you kidding me? They're like trekking Mal and Alina through like the mountains and trying to find the stag, blah, blah, blah. But he was saying that like she looks so happy with the Darkling and it makes him mad and blah, blah, blah. And she was like, well, I never really belonged anywhere. And he was like, you belong with me, Taylor Swift. Just you belong with me. And then he goes on this like little rampage about how he like pretty much freaking loves her and he's like i'm sorry it took me so long to see you alina but i see you now and then he kissed her and i'm just like screaming inside because like i ship them so hard now even though like people don't like mal which i don't really know why i'm sure something is gonna happen to make me hate him but and I'm just like so happy for Alina because like she's been waiting her entire life for this kiss and it's finally here. She's getting the kiss of her lifetime. Even though like she kissed the Darkling and apparently that was amazing. But I feel like childhood best friend who you've been longing after for your entire life is probably a little bit more exciting than Evil Mastermind. But I ship them so hard. And of course as soon as they have their like kiss that they've been waiting for forever, the stags show up to ruin the moment. Now they gotta go shoot some bitches. I feel like the Darkling is gonna show up and then Mal's gonna have to like stab her or something because he promised that he would kill her if the Darkling showed up so that she couldn't be used as a weapon. But there's also six more books in the series because of King of Scars and the Rules of Wolves, whatever. Are those included in this series? I don't know, but all I know is that I am so far behind on this series and the TV show is coming out in four days, so I gotta I gotta pick up my reading, so I'm gonna get back to that okay, now. Okay, so Alina just like literally walked up to the stag like some Snow White motherfucker and is allowed to pet him. Is it like the Darkling in disguise? Is that what's gonna happen? Because this makes no sense whatsoever. An ancient stag that's all mighty powerful that you need to kill that knows you're trying to kill it would not just let you walk up to him and be like, yo, let me pet your muzzle. Like, it, I think it's the Darkling or some kind of magical shit's gonna go down right now. I don't know if this is actually plausible, but Alina's like tied up to a pole right now. And couldn't she just like use her sunlight thing to like burn through the rope? Because like if sun is hot enough, it burns through rope, doesn't it? So like she could just escape. I don't understand why she's literally just sitting there being like, this sucks. I'm, I'm trapped because doesn't the Darkling only control her if he's like 
present in her area and I'm pretty sure he's not like in the vicinity so like bitch call your light and burn through the ropes and then you're free and then you can go save Mal and happily ever after bada bing bada bing we're done but no you're just sitting there so okay I'm confused is Genya evil like she shows up at Alina's room wearing full Grisha colors like the red which is the highest ranking order possible with blue embroidery in case you're wondering because I'm all hung up on colors we all know this but does that mean that she betrayed the king for the darkling to give her the full Grisha colors because the king fell ill mysteriously so I'm assuming that it's supposed to be believed that Genya did that to him but is this like she's evil now because I don't want her to be evil because I like her and I want her to be good and I, I, I don't want her to be on the Darkling side because she's supposed to be on Alina's side. So I'm confused. Somebody please explain this to me. Am I just like confusing everything or is she evil now? I'm done. I'm giving it a five out of five stars. I really liked it. Overall thoughts, I am kind of annoyed about the Darkling because I feel like he should be like more evil. Like I've seen so many things about him on like Twitter, people talking about him, about how evil he is and he's like such a great villain. But like honestly, he was like really sweet at the beginning and then he like literally turned so quickly and it just wasn't like effortless, if that makes sense. Like it wasn't a smooth transition between oh, I love you, Alina, to <laughs> lol, you're my slave now. It didn't work, in my opinion. I just feel like it should have been, like, explored more, if that makes sense. I'm still not over Genya. I liked her so much, and then she turned on Alina, and, like, they were supposed to be, like, BFFs. Like, not BFFs, but, like, she was supposed to be on her side, and it just makes me angry that she was actually on the Darkling side, because I just feel like, you know, why, girl? Just... <laughs> It just makes me mad. Also, I definitely ship Mao with Alina because I'm into childhood best friends to lovers. I just, yes, more please. I'm really intrigued to see where book two goes. Let me know down below if you guys want like a reading vlog like this for Siege and Storm or not. If you don't, I won't do it and I'll just read the book myself, but I had fun with this. So it's Tuesday, April 20th today and the show comes out on Friday. So I'm obviously not gonna get the last like six, one, two, three, four, five, five books, six technically done by the time the show comes out. So I mean, I'm not gonna be watching the show until I finish all of them, which probably won't be until like May or June. So I'm gonna be behind. So don't give me any spoilers on the TV show, but thank you for joining me. Let me know if you want me to do another one of these and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye. Yeah.